I'm trying to be a bit more on camera these days, muster up my courage to do so. It's always really disconcerting being in front of the camera, so I'm doing my best and I hope you're all doing well out there at the moment. It's been a very crazy week or two, especially in certain parts of the world. I really don't want to talk about it, I want to just keep my channel as a safe and happy place, somewhere that we can all escape to and not have to worry about the realities of the real world. So I don't really have an arty video planned for today and that's because I actually took a week off last week. I decided spur of the moment to go out and visit my father for a few days. I just needed a bit of a break. I've been feeling just a little bit burnt out lately making a lot of videos as you can imagine it's quite intensive producing two videos a week it's pretty much full time because i have to make the art i have to film it and of course then there's a whole bunch of post-production editing so there is a lot of work in making just one video but of course i have to make two in a week that's something that i chose to do and i still quite enjoy doing it it's pretty hard to maintain it sometimes though so i'm doing my best and i am trying to take breaks in between filming just so that I can recharge my batteries as well. I'm also at that point in my channel where it's starting to grow quite a bit more especially since Christmas and so maintaining that is something that I'm very much determined to do and I would of course like it to grow much larger as the months go by but at the moment I just have that nice slow steady growth and I can live with that it's not always as fast as I would like it to be of course but pretty much the only thing that one can do is just keep going and not give up so pretty much since Christmas just after Christmas when I posted that art supplies haul I've noticed quite a increase in views on my channel. I was sitting at about 20,000 views a month for quite a long time and now it's gone up to 30,000 views a month and I'm just astounded that people actually watch my videos. I am so thankful to all of you who have supported me so far through your comments, your likes and just viewing my videos it makes a huge difference to me and I appreciate all of you. I also just want to mention that if I don't respond to you it's not because I've read your comment and ignored you it's because I haven't actually seen the comment. Normally YouTube will send me notifications when someone's commented on a video and so I can click on it and then reply to you but sometimes it doesn't and Every so often I will go into YouTube studio and there's a little option where you can see unread comments and they'll find a whole bunch of them there that have been there for days that I have not even seen. So I do apologize if I am late in responding to your comments. That is the reason why I just haven't seen them and sometimes I forget to go and look. So <laughs> it's just my mistake there, but it's also YouTube's fault for not telling me. <laughs> And I don't know if you've noticed, I started putting it in my description, but I will let you know here that I have finally got a P.O. box. I thought I might get one because I have been getting a few requests from people to send me things. So if you would like to send me something, whether it's an art supply, an artwork, that would be amazing. I would love to have your artworks or anything else you can think of that you want to send me. Please check out the description below. You will find my P.O. Box address down there. So what's happening in the future videos? I'm <laughs> not a clue. I have plenty of things that I want to film and I have heaps of ideas going around so I don't have anything like art block but it's just more of a creative burnout that because I want to film everything at once it's just so overwhelming so I'm trying to pull back and just pace myself a little bit so that I can continuously put out videos but not to the extent where my health is suffering both mentally and physically so I've got things on my wish list that I would like to buy in the way of art supplies but of course it's expensive to do so and I've been very much aware of my budget. I mean as you may have seen in a recent video my husband Nick bought me this beautiful set of gouache. There are three other sets I am sorely wanting to buy them. They're not cheap though. I'm torn between buying those three th sets but also the other things that I am aware have come out recently are the new Schmincke super granulation sets and you've probably seen my 
my previous videos where I have reviewed five sets. There are another three of them that have come out and I think Jackson's even put out a special set, Haze or something like that. They are horribly expensive as well at the moment and I was tempted to buy them when they first came out but at that time I was waiting to get paid and I just thought you know I'm just going to leave it for a little while so I can get paid a few times and make sure that my budget doesn't get totally destroyed. So I will eventually get them, I hope to anyway, mainly because I have the other the sets and I really want to get the 15 mil sets in the wooden boxes because I just like to have all of them of the same kind. I know that there are the 5 mil sets which are cheaper but it will really bother me to have some that are 5 mil tubes not in wooden boxes so it's totally a first world problem and I could buy the small tubes but I think I'm going to save my money and buy the wooden boxes because then I can paint the wooden boxes and have this really awesome collection of them. But then of course now I've seen those Holbein gouache sets as well and I'm thinking oh my gosh do I get the gouache sets or the super granulation sets first. I don't know which one should I get, should I get them or should I not bother. Please tell me because it's so hard to know what you guys want to watch sometimes. I pretty much tend to film the things that I want to make as well but I'm also aware that there are certain types of videos that people are more interested in so I am trying to cater to that too because I would like to grow my channel. At the moment I'm pretty much just relying on YouTube income and a little bit from affiliate links but I haven't done a huge amount with that yet. I've been trying to pace myself because I don't want to do too much at once because I know I'll burn out. It's already difficult to produce two videos a week and also then come up with something like Patreon. Oh, I don't think I can handle Patreon. It just looks way too much work. Every month you've got to put something out and I just don't think I could cope with that stress right now. So that's why I have not done Patreon. I've seen a few other people be quite successful with it and I've seen a few other people struggle and I thought I'd be one of those people that would struggle. So rather than spreading myself too thin, I'd rather focus on making higher quality videos and eventually Probably once I've reached about 5,000 subscribers or so, I will start to consider having a website and things like that. So I'm slowly building and I do have plans for the future, but one step at a time. And I just want to make sure I'm not biting off more than I can chew at any given time. I also just want to give a huge shout out to my amazing husband Nick. He has been so wonderful during my YouTube journey. He's been incredibly supportive. And speaking of Nick, I just want to tell you about this magic power that he seems to have. And it started off years ago when he found a four leaf clover and then another one and I noticed that every time we went for a walk he'd go and he'd spot a four leaf clover in any group of clover. It's this incredible power he has to spot four leaf clovers. I've never ever in my life found one. He has found hundreds of them over the years. It's crazy and it doesn't stop there. He's just got this amazing ability to spot things that are lying on the ground that end up being quite valuable or really interesting so he's forever picking up coins and I have to say his absolute peak of finding things was when he was coming home from work I think it was early last year he was stuck in traffic on the freeway and he just happened to look out the window and right down beside his car was an iPad laying on the ground and so he quickly opened his door, leaned out and grabbed it and pulled it in and it was in a tough case so we think that it probably fell off the back of a tradies ute or something like that. So he handed it into the police station, they had it all through lockdown. About six months later he received a phone call from the police station saying that no one had claimed it and would Nick like to have it? So he said, yes, please. We had to wait another three months for the police station to actually open up fully because that particular branch had closed during the lockdown. So nine or 10 months later, and we have an iPad. He took it to his work and one of his IT mates managed to crack into it and wipe any data that was on it from the previous owner and then Nick brought it home and said he probably wasn't really going to use it so he's given it to me and I am so excited to finally for the first time in my life actually have an iPad. I've used a Samsung tablet for many years and 
I could never justify spending all the money to buy an iPad. So to get a free one as a total bonus, I bought a case for it and I also bought one of those Apple pencils. These are so stupidly expensive. It was around $150 and I nearly didn't, but I really want to try doing some digital artwork. So I also bought Procreate and I've been playing around with it on here. It's really fun. I'm not very good with it yet. I am so thankful to Nick for giving that to me. And the other thing I found a few days ago was this really bright fluorescent cable for it because we only have one charging cable in the house that will fit any Apple product. So I figured I might as well grab another one and I might as well have the brightest one in the lot. So while I was away at my father's, Nick decided to visit one of the vintage markets that we sometimes go to, which is the Waverley Antique Markets. And he found that they are closing up shop there and they're actually moving to a new location. So they're in the process of moving this gigantic marketplace into a location that's a few suburbs over, a little bit further from home but not too far thankfully. And a lot of stall holders have decided because they don't want to move as much stuff that they would put everything on 50% off. So Nick had a look around to see if there were any bargains to be had and there was also one particular vintage tool that he was after. He collects planes and spoke shaves and things so he picked that up but he also found a few items for me. Once I got home we actually went back again to have another look together and I also found a few other items. So I'm going to show all of those things that we found in the vintage market. Some of them are art supplies and other things are just bits and pieces that I took a fancy to and also because they were on half price sale so why not? <laughs> so I'll head down to the desk for that because it's much easier than holding everything up to the camera. So in my previous vintage haul I showed you this Rembrandt biscuit tin with a picture of the night watch on it and it's pretty stained and dinged but I did like it. I thought it was really great. It's from the 1950s. Well, guess what I found? Another one! And this one's in even better condition. It's much shinier on the front for the most part. And on my first tin, see how his face is a bit bashed in there? This one is pretty much in perfect condition. So this was half the price of this one. So I just had to pick it up. I don't even know what I'm going to do with them. I want to kind of lovingly restore them a little bit and maybe put some felt inside and use them as storage boxes. I just think they're fabulous. How can I not have Rembrandt boxes in my studio? One of the coolest but most ridiculous things I have ever found is this. It's a 1950s top hat ice cube container and I had to have it. It's so hilarious. I've never seen anything like this. It was on half price and so I figured I might as well pick it up. I've never seen one. I probably will never see one again. It's so silly but I really love it. Have you ever seen those large round ceramic dishes made for deviled eggs and they have little wells in them? They're really fantastic as paint pellets but they're also incredibly large and heavy. I used to have one but it was just so massive I couldn't really fit it anywhere on my desk. Well, I found one and it's half of the size. It's much lighter and I think this is so cute. It is a little dish for eggs, but I think it would make an excellent paint palette. So it's got six wells in it. I just thought that was really sweet. In a previous video I did, which I'll link at the end of this one, I found a wooden box of coasters from about the 70s or so those ones that have the cork inside bits and I gave it a makeover. Now it looks like this and I turned the coasters into planets which I then filled with resin. So do check that video out if you wanted to see what this looked like previously and what it looks like now with all of the planets in there. But I just happened to spot another one. It's not quite the same but it is definitely a set of coaster drawers like that and you could see that lovely cork in there. I don't know that I would ever want to use those. They look pretty filthy and who knows what bacteria is living in that. But I thought these would be so much fun to do another makeover on. So I have no idea what I'm going to do with this yet. I need to think about it. Do comment down below with any suggestions on what I could do with this. I am thinking of using resin again because I still have some. 
This one has eight drawers. So actually this one would have been better for the planets rather than the one that I had with the nine drawers and I had to add Pluto in. <laughs> oh well, I'm not going to do planets again. I will do something different for this. But it's kind of cool. I'm thinking something steampunk or something like that. So yeah, that's just on the back burner but I thought I'd pick it up. This one cost a little bit more. This was $6 instead of $4 for this one. <laughs> oh, I got ripped off. It's not vintage but it was in one of the stalls sitting on top. It's a colouring book, a Game of Thrones colouring book, and it's brand new in that it's not been coloured in, so I picked that up. It was $5, I think. So it's pretty lame, but I might do one or two of the pictures out of here. All men must draw, um, excuse me. <laughs> Ah, let's put that aside. And now for the things that Nick found when he went by himself to the vintage market. First up, a telephone! I'm so happy. I have been looking for another one for ages. They are so expensive, my lord. They're usually anywhere between $40 and $60, and that's just for the cream ones. Some of the other colours, which are rarer, go for over $100, like the red one and the black are usually the most expensive. But this one was $35 at half price, down to $17. It works pretty well. It is pretty filthy. And I am so excited to give this phone a makeover. I've already named her Mabel. I've just always wanted to have a phone called Mabel, I guess. <laughs> so this will be a future video. I'm not sure when, I'm not sure what I'm going to paint on this yet, but I'm very happy to have another telephone in my collection. Nick also found this pencil case. And if I open it up, you can see it's got places in here for pencils and erasers and sharpeners. It is made by British Plastics Party Limited Melbourne and I had a bit of a look to see if I could find any information about the company and I found something. Apparently the company had a factory in Melbourne that opened prior to 1937 and closed in 1978. They produced a range of Bakelite canisters, butter dishes, dinnerware, coronation mugs, all sorts of other things. And so we think it's Bakelite. It's got that kind of Bakelite feel to it. And I think it's really nice. It's in very good condition. I could not tell you when it was made, perhaps in the later times, maybe in the 70s or so. And the piece de resistance, which Nick found just completely by chance as he was walking past a stall, it was laying on its side, it had a tag which said $18 hanging off the end of it, is this black metal box. And if I open it up, <laughs> it's a paint box and it is by Reeves and Company. I mean obviously it's not perfect, it is missing a half pan here, this one's broken, this little dish is broken. This dish is a separate one that did not come in this set, so it is technically missing two dishes. But it's actually really neat, and it has quite a few of the paints still intact. It has three tubes of paint, which are absolutely rock-solid dry in there. We've got Indian yellow tint, sepia, and mauve. So those three tubes just look so cool, don't they? I might have to do a painting or something just of these tubes as a subject. I think they're so pretty. But in the set, it's also got a little swatch card, which is pretty much unusable. But at least it has the names of the colours for the most part, although it's lost one up the end. And these things can be really expensive. But for $18, yes, it is pretty battered. But I think it's still usable. I would probably give this a bit of a clean up. A very gentle cleanup and just take off some of the rust and dirt that's in there. I just love it so much. I'm so curious to see if these pans will re-wet. I've got a bit of cheap watercolour paper here and I'm just going to see what they look like. Oh they are so dry. It's going to take a while I think to activate these. I'm just going to drip some water onto them. They are just rock solid. I mean, these things are ancient. You can just see how that water's beating up on there. So they're not really designed to be used in this day and age, I don't think. Let's do another swatch and see if I can get anything out of them.
mean, some of them are pretty dead, like that one, that one, and that one, they just will not re-wet. But others are surprisingly good, like that brown, the black, the green's okay, that vermilion orange colour, that blue, the purple's not too bad. I mean, these are probably approaching antique levels. They've got to be made somewhere in the first half of the 20th century, I'd say. But what a find. I just love the way it looks in all its filthy glory. Okay, well that's everything I've got for today. I'm so excited to have this. It's really neat and I can't believe Nick actually saw it. It's that superpower at work once more. Because <laughs> I can never see anything. It's always him that finds things. So I didn't have time to make an artwork this week because I'd come home from my father's and I'd also taken the whole weekend off as well. I took pretty much an entire week because I really needed it. I will be back into making art this week and filming something. I have no idea what yet, so I shall be having to put my thinking cap on and come up with something for the weekend. And I thought it would be nice just to have a little studio catch up anyway, because it's been a long time since I've done any kind of vlog. Thank you so much for watching. I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe subscribe to my channel and always click that thumbs up button because that helps too. I will see you all again really soon in my next video. Take care out there. Swatch you later. Bye!